I'm going to challenge you to go back to your business and say, if we took one process within our organization and we started from zero, how would we rebuild this today? What would we automate? What would we eliminate? What requires more humanity? And when you start from zero, you don't get a 10% improvement. You actually get a 10x improvement. Let me give you an example of this. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Colombia. I was sitting at, the, at, at lunch with the CEO of a marketing company. And she said to me, Sean, you talked about this idea of starting from zero. How would I do this in a marketing company? I said, well, the way that you used to do a marketing campaign, you would get your teams together, you would plan, you would strategize, you would figure out what the creative assets might look like, you would do pre-production, production, and post-production, and then you get your teams together and coordinate and put out the good things in the world. That's the old way of doing that. And in the new way, what I would do in an agentic world is I would tell everybody on the team to come up with the final output, the final deliverable, the final landing page, the copy, the assets, the film, whatever. Prompt together what the final thing is going to look like. Because when everyone can see the vision 10 times more clearly, they can execute 10 times faster and easier and better. That's not a 10% improvement. That's a 10x improvement. That's what starting from zero really is all about. Please join me in welcoming Sean Canugo to the stage. Thank you. All right, Project Con. Well, I'm super excited to be here today talking to you about my favorite subject around innovation and AI. You know, a lot of people ask me this question, which is, you know, what is the future of technology really going to look like, Sean? What is the future of AI really going to look like for us? Like, are we going to have everything at our fingertips? Are we going to be sitting on a beach with a margarita so the ages do all our work? What, what is the future really going to look like? And I always tell people that the future of technology is um, Kelly Rowland. Let me explain, okay? Kelly Rowland uh, was a singer in Destiny's Child, and let me explain this story to you as to why she's the future of technology. Okay, in 2002, there was a music video with Nelly and Kelly. It was called Dilemma, okay? And in that music video, Kelly Rowland was seen texting Nelly using Microsoft Excel. And of course she was mad that Nelly wasn't texting back because it was on Excel. <laughs> but this became a huge meme for the last number of decades. And I, this has been my Roman Empire. I've been following this story for decades, okay? And a number of years ago, Kelly Rowland was on a talk show trying to explain what this incident was all about. And this is what she said. Here's okay. the stitch, okay? Explain it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what Microsoft Excel is. I, I don't know. I don't have a clue. So, And after I watched that, I thought to myself, God damn, she's had a good life. <laughs> she's never heard of Microsoft Excel? What a, what a privilege. <laughs> and for the longest time, like for the last number of years, I thought that Kelly Rowland had the best life in the world up until last month, up until October 2025, when she was part of another conversation and I just realized that someone else had a better life than her. So let me show you the conversation. I don't know whose brilliant idea it was to text on Microsoft <laughs> Excel, <laughs> but it chases me everywhere that I go. And everybody's always asking me, why were you? I said, I don't know. I was given the device. It had this on it. And here we are in the video. They're like, oh, we need a shot of it. I was like, okay, I guess this is right. And here we are 25 years later. Why are you texting a man? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I was watching this video and I was watching Mariah Carey. And I, 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 was, I was looking at her reactions and I, I, I was thinking to myself, this woman has also never heard of Microsoft Excel <laughs> in her life. She's never watched that music video with Nelly and Kelly. I don't think Mariah Carey has ever used Uber Eats in her life. She has people in her life just getting stuff done for her. And the reason why I think the future of technology looks a little bit like Mariah Carey and, and Kelly Rowland 
is that maybe there's an opportunity for these agents to get stuff done for us so that technology becomes increasingly more of a commodity. Maybe this is what the future really looks like. Now, there's many people in this room. You're in the role of making government more seamless, for them to be more productive, for them to be more efficient. And I want to show you how I could take an RFP and then ultimately create the actual product that they're asking in the RFP. And I'm gonna show you a process of how I actually did this. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about why we are going to reimagine how we look at RFPs and this entire procurement process. So follow along with me. The first thing that I did, I actually went to uh, Deltex GovWin IQ. And what's beautiful about GovWin IQ is that you can take a look at any bid that's out there, any RFP that's out there. So what I did is I went to GovWin and then I looked up any project in Denver. And so I found this project in Denver, which was the Economic Development Group. And it was modernization of Colorado Future Jobs website. And what's beautiful about GovWin, it actually creates a smart summary for you. So you don't have to read the RFP. You can get a quick synopsis of this. And by the way, they also provide you a AI written proposal outline for you. So incredible, incredible starting point. And this is the actual website, by the way, of the Colorado Jobs website. This is the existing website. I took that information, I went to ChatGPT, I said, hey, create me a prompt based on this RFP so that I can go off and actually create this actual platform, this actual website for them. So uh, ChatGPT created a prompt based on the RFP. And then I took the prompt, I copied and pasted that prompt, and I went to a tool called Lovable. Lovable is a tool where you can create almost any platform ap application um, at your fingertips. And what's beautiful about these tools, they're getting more agentic over time. So not only can they create the front-end capabilities, but they can also create some of the back-end capabilities right there for you. And you could take a look at the, this platform. The, the fact that you can create this today, and I've been part of digital and for my entire career, the fact that you can do this today is absolutely ridiculous. It is. And, you know, if I think about this process that the, the GovWin IQ not only summarized the RFP and sent me a proposal outline, but then I can go off and actually build out the RFP. Um, we're gonna reimagine how we look at work. Because if I'm, the, if I'm actually the state of Colorado and I'm the Department of Economic Development, my first job would be, hey, let me use every single AI tool on the planet to get me to a point th that then I can work with a vendor. Hey, vendor, I've already gone through the process, now help me out. Now help me out with the security and, and, and the audit readiness and whatever it might be. Like, that's how we're starting to reimagine how we look at work. And I want to give you a glimpse of what the future of work is really gonna look like. Last week, I got an early invite from Anthropic's uh, Claude for Excel. Anthropic is another company and they have a large language model known as Claude. And you know, OpenAI and Claude have always been able to build an Excel, but now Claude is actually in the Excel. And this to me is a glimpse of what the future of work is really gonna look like, that you're gonna have an AI in your applications and helping you out throughout every single point. So let me show you an example of this. I went to Claude and I said, hey, uh, first thing I did is I, I want to create some data. So I went to Claude, I said, hey, create me a synthetic data file of a project, of a typical project controller, and make sure that it's 50,000 lines deep. So I created a synthetic data file. And once I had this data file, I, I clicked on Claude for Excel. You can see it on the top right-hand side. And what's beautiful about Claude for Excel is that now you have an assistant beside you that can help you actually in the actual Excel. This is what a glimpse of the future of work really looks like, that AI is beside you along the way with every single application that you have. And what we're starting to do with AI is that we are reimagining everything that we know about work. We are reimagining everything that we know about how we do our processes internally. My father, used to be an accountant. And I remember, that's my father, Deepak Kanungo. When I was a kid, before we had a computer, he would have these black ledger books where he would put his accounting information in. And then when the computer came out and Excel came out, he put his information in there. And then when accounting software came out, he put his information in there. And I remember when my father passed away in 2008, I had to take over his business. And I remember walking into his business and being baffled 
in 2008, how much paper there was still was. He had filing cabinets and he had all this paper. And the first thing that I did was I bought an OCR machine to digitize all that paper. But what I realized over the last four decades of technology, what we have done is all we have done is created an elegant way of storing, retrieving, and collecting data into a system of record. That's all we've done. This revolution is different because for the first time in human history, now we have a system of intelligence. Now this software can actually get stuff done that my father was never able to do. My father was never able to do a 24 seven reconciliation of receipts and invoices, a 24 seven daily audit. He could never do that. No human could ever do that. And so agents can do work that we were never able to do. And I think that's where the power of agents um, come to play. You know, it's interesting. I, I tell you this story, but this is exactly actually how this, th this company started. The reason why we are here at Project Con is because of this company, Dell Tech. Dell Tech started in 1983. Two founders, a father and a son, Donald and Kenneth, they found this idea that they could help contractors with their government work. So they literally went to Sears and they bought an IBM because that was the revolution at the time. And they said, you know what? We can help people and make this more efficient. That's how we got here. And now this company is trying to reinvent and reimagine themselves because of AI. And I think that this is what every organization should be doing, which is figuring out how do we develop AI systems internally so that we are an AI powered organization. The first AI artist, her name is Xenia Monet, made it to the Billboard charts, Airplay charts. I'm going to play you a, a, a small version of this song. You can hear it now. He didn't walk me down no stairs. Didn't warn me about them boys who wouldn't care. So from the beginning, I go into Suno. Suno, okay. That's I, the music app. Correct. Okay. Suno is the music app. I scroll through my list of poems or what I wrote to see what I want to make a song about. Got it. And I just take those lyrics, just go in and paste. A sample style, slow tempo, R&B. So you're song. saying I want slow tempo R&B. Okay. She adds a few more prompts into AI music generator Suno, like female, soulful vocals, light guitar, and heavy drums. And from there, you just create. And they give you two versions. So the first version, what I just played, mm -hmm. this will be the second one. There's definitely a difference between the right. two. And yeah. definitely, sometimes I'm doing this for hundreds of songs. Really? Until I get the one that I feel like sounds right. So if they give you two options and you don't like it, you keep going back? Right. I press create again. Create again. And okay. you see two more come up. The, the thing that I was impressed by is that this woman in Mississippi just learned AI four months ago, and she created a song that can be on the Billboard charts. To me, that's actually pretty impressive. And how democratize this technology really is. Now, I do have to say this when it comes to AI. Um, there is going to be an important skill set as we move into the future when it comes to AI, which is we have to understand when to ignore it. We have to understand when to not use it, because this is going to be an epidemic where we just use it for everything. L l let me give you a hypothetical situation. What if the Wright brothers, the ro brothers that invented flight, what if they were given chat GPT? Would they still have invented flight? And my hypothesis is that these, these bicycle mechanics, they would have gone to chat GPT, and what chat GPT would have done, it, it, was, it would have collected all the scientific research, all the evidence up until that point, up until the late 1800s, and it would have concluded that flight is fundamentally impossible. But of course, the Wright brothers, they defied conventional wisdom, they innovated, and they revolutionized the world. And this is what innovators do. 
And so I believe in AI. I believe AI is the second most powerful force ever created, and the first will be our ability to ignore it.